Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And as you can see, we've got a full meal day on our hands today, which I'm really happy about because I love opening the post. I love getting like new cards in the mail. And actually, this is a pickup. So I picked this one up in Harlem. This one comes from Henk. He's also the organizer of the online Dutch old school league known as Odol, where you can, it's really great. Like if you, if you can play in it, it's a great experience. I'll put a link, uh, Hank, to your event in the description below. So if you're interested in, in Odol and, and playing an online league with a lot of Dutch guys, Norwegian guys, actually guys from all over the place, then um, yeah, check it out. Every month, I believe he organizes one. Um, then we've got this envelope also from the Netherlands. And this one is from Goat Enterprises. And um, it's from Rudy, the Dutch Rudy. I'll open this one last, I think. So I'm just gonna keep this one here and I'm gonna start with this envelope. There we go. What are we gonna find? Ah, yes, now I remember. This is from Tristan. Tristan, thank you. And he was actually offering his stone calendars for sale. And I got them. And stone calendar, just the art is very nice and it's also an interesting card i'll just get it out of the top loader here and um yeah show it to you and kind of discuss what i want to do with the card so here we go stone calendar and let's 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 have a look so we've got two stone calendars oh yes and this card here crimson manticore uh let's start with the stone calendar shall we so i'm just gonna take one out of the sleeve so we can just take a look at it really nice art it's beautiful i really like the art by amy weber very recognizable um i also love the art on time elemental which is from her as well and of course we've got time walk which is also from amy weber so very talented artist uh this is from the dark five to cast for the stone calendar look at all those details Stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, it's kind of an oddball card. It doesn't see that much play. Um, what it does is your spells cost up to one less to cast. Casting cost of spells cannot go below zero. So the thing is because it's already a five casting cost card, by the time that you get this in the game, you're probably like, okay, but why do I want to have like a discount on my spells when I'm playing this turn, what, five or turn four early if I've got some mana ramp? You know, how is that going to help me? Well, the way I want to use this actually is in a, a deck with Titania Song and um, maybe use some Mana Volts to get the Stone Calendar out quickly and then just get a lot of artifacts on the board and then play Titania Song. And of course, Stone Calendar is five as well. So that means this is going to be a five, five creature. So that's kind of my my big plan with, uh, with the Stone Calendar. So... It's a little test. I've seen other people playing it, I believe, Stone Calendar and Titania Song. I've seen it before. I can't really remember where, but other people have tried it as well. And I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. I want to give that a try as well and give that a little, you know, Timmy spin and, and, and see what I can do. So now I've got two new Stone Calendars, already had one. So if my math is correct, now I have three Stone Calendars, which I think is enough. I don't think you want to play four in the Titania's plan, but um, it's really good to have them. So two stone calendars and then this interesting little card, the Crimson Manticore, look at that art. That is a grumpy Manticore. Ooh, I don't like you. And it's like me on Monday morning. <laughs> uh, two red and two to cast, uh, summon Manticore flying a 2-2 two -two creature and they can ping, right? Which is kind of weird. Well, can only ping Creatures, uh, let's let's take a close look. So one red and tap. Manticore does one damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So again, I think it's interesting, you know. One of, for me personally, one of the most interesting parts of magic and, and the parts of magic that I enjoy so much is the combat step. I really, really like that. And that's probably also why I'm a fan of like mid-range decks because combat is interesting. There are so many cards that do something in combat. There's so much happening in combat. There's so much interaction going on between player A and player B, you know, and when you skip that whole combat, it's like the game gets a little hollow, if you know what I mean. So I really enjoy decks that celebrate the combat step. You know, of course, that's my personal opinion, but here you have it. Anyway, Crimson Manticore, I'm really happy to have this. This is my first copy 
probably going to be my only copy as well. Um, yeah, great pickup. So thank you, Tristan, for sending this over. Um, and let's have a look. Let's do this one to Timmy, the letter from Hank. And here we go. Nicely wrapped and packed, as always. And we've got, ooh, look at this. Let's start with this. Oh, oh, oh. A beautiful, beautiful plateau. This is actually a revised, of course, as you can see at the artwork. The Unlimited one uh, has a different type of art. This one's done by Drew Tucker. I think it's one of the better pieces done by, by Drew, Drew Tucker. It's my personal opinion. Art is always very personal, isn't it? I just, I've always liked this kind of person you're standing on top. And you can kind of like use your fantasy and think, okay, who's gonna gonna stand here looking over the plane? Just very beautiful. I think this dual lands always are just very beautiful. They're so so iconic. And I remember, let me try to find the try to take it out of the sleeve here. Let's have a closer look. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, look, look, this is how it works. Yeah, it's hard to see on camera, but it's kind of tucked in. Okay, that's kind of odd. I haven't seen many sleeves like this before. So now I'm taking it out, you see? And let's take a closer look. Beautiful card plateau. Tep, of course, like any dual land, you can choose two different mana. In this case, a red one and a white one. Beautiful, and this is actually the last revised duel that I needed. And it's been at Hank's place for a while because we made a deal, I don't know, a month ago, two months ago. Uh, but yeah, I, had, I hadn't had a chance to pick it up. So thank you very much for this. And then we also had some other cards. Do -do -do -do. Four beautiful Tundra Wolves. And I had another mill day with Army of Allah. Maybe you remember that. And I think this card goes great with Army of Allah. So it's uh, one to cast right for a one, one, one wide to cast. Pretty cool art, pretty cool art. And uh, yeah, it's a one, one first striker. Just beautiful. You wanna cast this when you play a Tundra, right? It's just that, that flavor feel, that's what you wanna do. Just like with Savannah Lines, you wanna cast it with a Savannah. And a Taiga, you wanna cast like a Kurt Ape and so forth, like they're just, for me, there are creatures that are connected with specific dual lands that I want to cast. It's really nice. So we've got Tender Wolves, a nice full play set of Tender Wolves. Oh, changing the settings here a little bit. There we go. Just really beautiful art. So we've got the Wolves. We've got the Duel. We've got the Stone Calendars. Oop, and then we have our final package. Let me make some space. Let me get this to the side. This again to the side. There we go. So this is from Goat Enterprises. Um, you can find them on Card Market. And uh, and Rudy, actually, the guy behind uh, Goat Enterprises, he's actually on the channel. You know what? I'll have a link popping up here somewhere, and you can see him play with a pretty pretty cool deck. Uh, let's go. Up. Zipper to zipper to zip. And there we go. I wonder what's in here. Ooh. It's always a good sign when something is packed so professionally, then it's probably a cool card, right? Or cards, because this seems to be pretty thick. Um, okay, let's get a pair of scissors. There we go. Get some scissors. Cut it open. Oop. I don't want to show the receipt. Oh wow, this whole stack of cards. Actually, I don't know if you've seen the um, the post by the Brothers of Fire where they talk about Mill Day 50. <laughs> it's hilarious. Like this new format. Uh, and I think I'm actually gonna gonna do it. I'm gonna be part of Mill Day 50, I think. Because the, these are the, the idea of Mill Day 50, for the people that don't know, is that you use the cards that are used to cover 
your old school cards and you use them to build a deck. So it's like completely random, but you can only use the cards that you've received as extras in mail days, right? So these, let's have a look. Yeah, like this, for example, is I, obviously he cannot play this. It's just one of those token cards, I guess. But if this would have been a play, playable card, you could use this in mail day 50, right? Because it's used to protect your actual, the actual cards that you've ordered. Anyway, bye-bye. Uh, and here we go, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Yeah, this is kind of weird. I discovered that I have three unlimited Merfolks and one beta Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. So yeah, I just wanted to order this one. So now I have four unlimited Merfolks of the Pearl Trident. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so this is actually a card I can use for the Mail Day 50 project. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually not gonna throw this out. I'm gonna keep this. Thank you, Brothers of Fire, for making this card useful. <laughs> And yes, I know it was an April Fool's joke, but I just think it's such a funny format. I'm actually gonna do it. Anyway, uh, let's check out the other cards. So two, four, five. I hope, I think most of these are actually old school cards when I look at the condition. So let's just go one at a time. And oh, beautiful, look at that. Beta Spell Blast. And look at the art on the Spell Blast. Those colors, they pop, you know, the black bordered beta one. This is just absolutely stunning. I think this is gonna be the um, the cover picture for this uh, for this video. Wow, what a beautiful card. Let me put it here to make a picture later. And, oh yeah, Sea Serpent. Again, Beta, so I believe these are also Sea Serpents. Now Sea Serpent, it is such a cool creature. One, one blue and five, right, for a five, five creature. So that actually is it's reasonable, it's not too bad, uh, especially since it's only one blue, right? But the thing is, it, it's got this thing that later they called Island Home, I believe, because it says Serpent cannot attack unless opponent has islands in play. And Serpent is destroyed immediately if at any time the controller has no islands. This is again, one of these cards where I wish they would have kind of changed the rules and would have said, you know, we're gonna give this card Island Walk instead of Island Home, then you give it a, a, a little uptick and it would have been so much more useful to play. Nobody now plays Sea Serpent, unfortunately. Well, except for me, because I want to play this next to Phantasmal Terrains. Why? Because I can, and I really, really love the art, so I'm just gonna do it. So we've got some Sea Serpents, and we got our beautiful Spell Blast, but we've got even more cards. And maybe more cards for my Mill Day 50. Let's have a look. Yeah, this can go into Mill Day 50. Woo, let's go over there. And let's turn this one around. Yes, there are the Phantasmal Terrains. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Phantasmal Terrain, two blue to cast for an enchant land. Target land changes to any basic land type of caster's choice. Land type is set when cast and may not be further altered by this enchantment. Phantasmal Terrain, pretty sweet. Actually, I've been thinking about playing this as well, maybe in my Timmy Spellbook, maybe one or two in the sideboard, because it's really difficult to kind of deal with lands when you're on mono blue. And there are just so many, you know, specific special lands that you kind of have to. So another one and another one. So four Phantasmal Terrain and four Beta Sea Serpents and another card for Mill Day 50. And here we go. Oh, cool, Flight. This is also very beautiful. Look at the art on this. It's like the purple pops so much more and so much better in the beta and the alpha versions. Like I'm, I'm a big fan of revives, big fan of unlimited, but certain cards with that black border is bam, you know, they're, ah, oh, this is one of those cards. And I think the spell blast was one of those cards as well. They just, they, 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 they come alive. And if, if, I mean, if you look at this art and you, you compare the art of the sets of like, what's that new Harry Potter set called? I have no idea, but it's like, ugh, ugh, you know, that's not art. This is, this is, this is fantasy art. This is what you want to see on a magic card. This is what you want to see. So anyway, what it does, blue, right? Enchant creature, target creature is now a flying creature. Okay, so this is the plan. I'm gonna cast my sea serpent. I'm gonna give my sea serpent flying. I'm, and I'm gonna give my opponent an island. And then I am set. And the rest is history. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het was, 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 ik het was